33-year-old Amanda Gaspard had to travel back to New Hampshire a few weeks after the terrorist attack so her parents could take care of her, otherwise she'd have been in a nursing home. I spoke with Amanda via Skype at her New Hampshire family house. Amanda Gaspard, survivor of the San Bernardino terrorist attack shooting. Tell me what happened to you on that day. I sustained a major injuries during the attack. I was shot multiple times, um, including in my leg. I lost over half of my blood volume, and I have shrapnel all over my body, including in my head, literally hundreds of pieces of shrapnel. When I talked to the county and to the survivors a few months ago, the county had promised to take care of all you guys for the rest of your lives. Why are you reaching out to me now? What could I do to help? Because the county has totally broken their promises. They are telling the media and the community that uh, none of us are having any more workers' comp problems, and that's absolutely not true. Um, myself and many other people are continuing to have problems. Earlier this year, I was denied a bone graft surgery. I have that notice of denial letter here. Um, I found out uh, just this uh, past week the county is cutting off all of my physical therapy treatments. They literally have sent a letter to the hospital telling them to stop treating me, that anything that they do is gonna be at their further financial risk if the hospital continues to treat me. And they said that the charges represent unauthorized self-procured medical treatment that was non-certified, uh, denied by utilization review. Um, earlier this month, I also had um, the denial of reimbursements for medications like aspirin um, to prevent post-op blood clotting, Tylenol for pain medication. The list goes on and on and on. I have literally hundreds of pages of documents um, of the county delaying and denying my treatment, which is absolutely unbelievable to me because the county has received millions and millions of dollars in uh, federal funding in the wake of the terrorist attack, and yet they are refusing me and my coworkers much needed mental health care and medical treatment. How much are you suffering, not just physically, emotionally also? Well, the mental anguish is obviously every single day mourning the loss of my deceased co-workers. I have PTSD that I'm in treatment for. The county still has not um, been paying consistently my psychologist. And in terms of physical pain, I'm in pain every single day. Uh, the fact that they do not want me to get better, do not want my co-workers to get better um, by these constant delays and denials of care is just unconscionable to me. You mentioned your co-workers. Are there others like you who we are not hearing from? I'm hearing from you. Are we not hearing from some of the others who are having possibly similar problems. Yes, there are many people. I'm in contact with my coworkers on a basically weekly basis. Um, they are so scared to speak out. People are afraid about losing their jobs. They're afraid of the backlash from the county, that the county will even deny them further treatment if they speak out and tell the truth. Finally, what is your message to the county of San Bernardino? I need help. I'm in desperate need of help. I need continued physical therapy, treatment by physicians. I probably will need future surgery. The county has informed us that they are going to begin cutting off of our off our care uh, at the two-year anniversary, December 2nd of this year. So this whole, we're going to help you for the lifetime, no, that's absolutely not true. We are already being told that they are going to start cutting us off entirely in a matter of a few months. I'm going to give the county a call. I'm going to try to get you the help you folks need, the help you folks deserve, and we'll see what happens amanda thank you so much for sharing your story thank you david wow yeah no sooner did i do that interview i did get on the phone and emailed the county to get a response to amanda's claims the county sent me a very detailed statement saying quote and here it is amanda contacted us about the same time she contacted you and the county immediately began looking into her concerns we're zeroing in on some answers but obviously it wouldn't be appropriate to share any of that information publicly before sharing it with her however what we can say at this point is that nothing is more important to the county than doing everything we can to ensure our injured employees get the care they need when they need it when they bring issues to our attention we work quickly to resolve their concerns the county has zero interest financial or otherwise in delaying or denying treatment the county goes on to say what we almost always find is that delays and denials can be traced back to patients doctors and therapists failing to submit legally required paperwork necessary for the county to authorize treatment the county cannot authorize treatment unless it's been requested by a doctor or a therapist 
In many cases, the county and the employee's nurse case managers have had to hound doctors and therapists on a daily basis for weeks at a time to get them to simply sign a legally required form that the county has already filled out for them. Once we finally get those signatures, approval is usually granted within 24 hours. Meanwhile, those doctors and therapists tell their patients they can't be treated because the county hasn't approved treatment. It makes no sense to us, and it's cruel to the recovering employees. End quote. Wow, so in the same sentence you say, it's cruel, but yet, uh, according to Amanda anyway, uh, they're going to end their medical services because the two-year mark's coming up, so which is it? Sounds a lot like passing the buck. Sounds a lot like what, you know, Grandma used to say, action speaks louder than words, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Clearly, the math isn't adding up here. Excellent work, uh, David Nazar, as usual.